I, Sandy Irby joined on time this week. Good job. Um, um, and yeah, so let's go. And you find Mark and Dan. Mark and Dan, would y'all be willing to give us a little prelude? We are set. Excellent. Then let's Dan. Don't worry, it's coming back. Right. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Dan. And good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Taos. We're having a little bit of a technical issue this morning, but I think it's starting to work. Um, I'm going to unmute everyone real quick. Can y'all see and hear me okay? Yes. Yes. All right. If yes. that stops, we can hear you okay. Yes. My hand is breaking up. All right. So if that stops, I'm going to remute y'all. Yeah. If that stops at any point on Zoom, just hang tight or try to hit the link again. If it happens on Facebook, just press the refresh button. Um, the internet's just being a little funny, but isn't that just what the internet does? Uh, also, a a little heads up as we have our moment for technology. Um, Dave Wasserman is a brave soul and he is doing, he's our tech deacon this morning. So can we all give a round of applause or likes or thumbs up for Dave for making my life easier? Yes. Um, that means he and I are gonna be flipping back and forth on the tech controls and inevitably we're gonna mess something up. Um, so, I just encourage you all to, as remember our first virtual Zoom Sunday was Palm Sunday. And we said, uh, we said we were gonna shout Hosanna every time something goes wrong um, because that means save us, literally. I'd like to embrace that as long as we're doing virtual worship because it makes me smile and it makes me laugh. So if something goes wrong, roll with it um, and just worship God. Let's see, other, are there any other announcements this morning? Uh, for those who are joining us for the first time for worship, um, it's pretty simple. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you're on a slight delay. So feel free at any time to offer us prayer requests in the comment section and we will share those uh, when we have our prayers of the people. If you're on Zoom, you can write in the chat section. You can go down to the bottom of your screen and press chat. Uh, that will allow you, you can talk privately to each other if you think the sermon's boring, that's always an option. Or you can share prayer requests with all of us. Uh, we'll also open up the microphones so y'all can share prayer requests in that way. Uh, if you want to mute or unmute yourself, you just hover over your little screen. You can press mute or unmute or go down to the bottom, click on participants. It'll say 18 and participants. And then you'll see a list over on the side where you can mute or unmute yourself. If you want to see the person who's talking the most, that's often me, you can click in the upper right-hand corner and it will say speaker view. If you'd rather see everybody who's worshiping with you this morning, you can click where it says gallery view and it becomes Hollywood Squares. Uh, that's always kind of fun for me to see the whole congregation gathered. So, uh, oh, one more very important thing. I am unmuting Mark and Dan. Um, Mark and Dan, are there any, or are there any, I shall unmute everybody. Are there any birthdays that we should know about this morning? Uh, no. Not yet. 
No. Not yet, Cliff says. When's your when's yeah. the birthday in question? Hers, hers is the 14th. The 14th. All right. Well, we'll be Next seeing week will be fine. <laughs> awesome. uh, let's, let's see. Debbie Spiker says hi from Facebook. Robert and Margaret McTavish, Boyd Earl. If y'all have any birthdays there, feel free to holler. Um, any other birthdays on Zoom we need to know of? So our grandson was born yesterday. <gasps> so we oh, have yay! Congratulations. William Christopher Ablin. Oh, nice. Oh, beautiful name. Well, that yeah. we will definitely have to sing for. Also, she's on Facebook. Also, she's on Facebook. Uh, but, uh, you guys again. She's on Facebook, so she can't tell you this, but it is actually today, it's my mom's birthday. And I can't tell you how old she's turning. That's against the rules. But uh, her name is Sandy Irby. Um, so we've got, it's, it's Chris, is he going by Christopher or Chris or what shall we say? Will. It's going to be Will. Will. All right. William Christopher. So Will. So uh, wonderful. Maestro, can we sing to Sandy and Will a happy birthday? Yeah. Thank you so much, Mark and Dan. Happy birthday to all of y'all. Uh, I am going to then, unless do we have any more announcements from the body, you can raise your hand on the screen or even better, if you clicked on participants at the bottom, you can press the raise hand button that will show up. It's a little button on the right hand side. Any other announcements or shall we continue with the call to worship? All right, Dave, take it away. calls us by name and leads us to abundant life. We yeah. hear your voice, O God, and hasten to follow. The shepherd prepares a table and lavishly pours out grace. We hear your invitation, O Christ, and take our place at the feast. The shepherd gathers us in and welcomes us to the house of the Lord, we hear your call, O Spirit, and give you praise. And let's join in singing together our opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, number 39 in the purple hymnal and number 276 in the blue hymnal.
you, Mark and Dan. Let us continue with our confession. The Lord prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies, standing in awe before such radical grace. Join me in confessing our sin together. We have gone astray, O shepherd. You call us to follow, and we hear your voice. Yet, we choose to heed other voices, voices that promise status and comfort and a carefree life, voices that tell us what we want to hear. But such promises are empty, and that life does not satisfy. Call to us again, O shepherd. Summon us onto right paths to pursue justice in your name, to seek after the well-being of all. Lead us to the table you prepare for us, where rivals share both bread and blessings and discover there is enough for all. Amen. Friends, Hear the good news poured out for us in the waters of baptism. Friends, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come, and is here to stay. So know this, whoever you are, whatever you've done, wherever you come from, you are forgiven. Know that whatever guilt or shame, regret or burden you hold on to from the past, you have been already forgiven. And know that wherever you go on this journey of life, you go with God, the good shepherd, and you will be always forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, join me as we prepare to listen to God's word this morning. O God of abundant life, your grace is our daily bread. Nourish us by your word and fill us with your spirit so that we may grow in faith and love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Acts in the New Testament, the second chapter, uh, beginning with the 42nd verse. This is a part of the story of the life among those first believers. And we read, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all 
as any had need day by day as they spent much time together in the temple they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts praising god and having the good will of all the people and day by day the lord added to their number those who were being saved friends this is the word of our god thanks be to God. And our second reading comes from the Psalms, a familiar one, the 23rd Psalm. Listen again to these familiar words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of our God. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
Thank you, Mark and Dan. Uh, something I forgot to say earlier is that, as you know, Zoom does not make the sound too great. Uh, so we are going to, you will see soon um, that when, when we have, or sorry, I got confused by the tech. We will see in just a little bit, um, Mark, that video on Facebook and it will be the direct recording. So it will be a much better, better recording of that. Um, so also something else I forgot before I go on to our gospel reading um, is something else I forgot to share with you all is that it is communion Sunday, which means in a little bit, we will be sharing bread and juice together, but apart. Um, I love that it said in the reading that Dave just read that people devoted themselves to the breaking, the breaking of bread and their homes. Um, that is literally what we will be doing. Uh, so bring your own bread, bring your own juice, and we will see you guys in, or we will have communion. I'm seeing a little tech thing going on. So Dave, I'm going to ask you, can you go to speaker view real quick for the folks on Facebook? And uh, there may be some issues on Facebook. Mine is still working, but I'm hearing that there may be some issues. So if you're, there we go. Perfect, Dave. Perfect. Um, if you got knocked off Facebook, just press refresh. If that happens, you get knocked off. Um, it looks like people are popping back on. What do we say when there's a tech issue? Hosanna. Perfect. All righty. Friends, let us take a moment and quiet our hearts and mind for prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Here's the fun little part where we wait for my sermon to come up digitally. There we go. Or nope, I completely messed that up. So anyone who plays liturgist, uh, it's not, you're not gonna mess up as much as me. We have a gospel reading still to go that I'm preaching on. Friends, hear the words of God. Jesus is in the middle of a fight with the Pharisees. And then he says these words. From John's gospel, chapter 10, verses one through 11. Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in it by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. 
Friends, the word of the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm going to, for just. mess with the tech again. Uh, seems if y'all on Facebook, give me a holler if you're still able to see everybody. We seem to have had a few issues there. Give me just a moment more. If you are on Facebook, you may also be seeing us in gallery view instead of uh, instead of speaker view right now. I don't know why that is. Uh, so enjoy watching everyone's face during worship uh, and let me know if anyone's sleeping. <laughs> uh, all right, Facebook's coming through good. All right, if you can only see us in little squares, I apologize and I don't know why. Um, but all is well and it's uh yes all right this is good thank you guys you're so flexible let's get back onto zoom and i'll try again for one second Let's pray again. God, you work through strange and mysterious things, including this technology through which we live. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to serve you. Amen. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me, says Jesus. It's true. I believe that, but we sure do hear a lot of voices. One more second. Speaking of which. But we sure do hear a lot of voices. Today's gospel reading picks up in the middle of an argument, as I said just a moment ago, between Jesus and the Pharisees. Jesus has just healed a blind man and the Pharisees are skeptical. They want to know how Jesus opened the man's eyes, whether the man was even blind to begin with and where on earth Jesus got the power and the authority to heal like that. In response to their questions, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. My sheep know my voice and they follow me. They run from strangers, thieves, and bandits because they do not know their voices, but they follow me and I lead them to pastures of abundant life. It may not sound like it in all its pretty biblical language, but y'all, these are fighting words. If Jesus identifies himself as the good shepherd, then it's pretty easy for the Pharisees and the crowds listening in to connect the dots and figure out who he is calling thieves and bandits. If Jesus is the legitimate shepherd and leader of the people, then they, the religious and political authorities are the illegitimate ones. The sheep hear the shepherd, Jesus says, and they follow him because they know his voice. It's true. It's true what he's saying about shepherds and sheep. In fact, in the Middle East to this day, shepherds don't go behind their flocks and herd them like we think of in the Western world. Instead, they walk in front of the sheep and they call to them. The sheep recognize the shepherd's voice and they follow. 
but we are not sheep. We hear all sorts of voices, are inundated with all sorts of them every day. So how do we know which voices are from God and which are not? How do we discern the vo between the voice of the shepherd and the voices of bandits and thieves? We think that the voices of our family would be the voice of the good shepherd and often families do speak words of love to one another, but not always. Sometimes family members abuse Sometimes parents neglect, sometimes brothers and sisters and siblings turn on one another. Sometimes those who are closest to us violate those sacred bonds and do us harm. We think that the voice of a pastor or religious leaders would echo the voice of the good shepherd and many do. But sometimes, like the Pharisees, we who serve the church lead our flocks astray. Sometimes pastors make mistakes, not just technological ones. Sometimes they, we willfully abuse or misuse power. We've seen it in horrors like financial, clergy financial fraud or sexual abuse. But we've also seen it more recently, in pastors who defied medical recommendations to close church doors during this virus outbreak. And now from France to Florida, from Washington to California to a church right outside where I grew up in Richmond, Virginia, people have become ill and died because of shepherds who abused their power. Let me assure you that your session, the governing body of this church, is making decisions about when and how to reopen our doors, not based on our pride and our sense of being irreplaceable, but based on medical and public health recommendations. Jesus taught us to love the Lord our God with all our minds, which your church leadership me believes means trusting that the Good Shepherd speaks through the voices of doctors and medical experts. We would hope that the voices of presidents and prime ministers, of political leaders of all kinds will speak with the voice of the Good Shepherd. And many do speak out of concern for the well-being of all people. But there too, we have seen that thieves and bandits find their ways into places of power and that these leaders too, like those Pharisees, can be wolves in sheep's clothing. My sheep hear my voice, Jesus says, but do we? There are so many voices vying for our attention. How do we know whom to trust? How do we recognize when it is the good shepherd who is speaking? I wonder, perhaps, if the answer lies in the psalm. That beautiful psalm that Dave read for us, I saw a few of you mouthing along that psalm that we know so well. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. How do we know the voice of the good shepherd? The good shepherd is the one who seeks out the good for us, green pastures, still waters, the one who constantly works for our well-being and wholeness, who restores our soul. The good shepherd is the one who leads us in the paths of righteousness, the voice that calls us to be the best version of ourselves, to seek justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with our God. The good shepherd is the one who walks with us always, even through the valley of the shadow of death. The one who doesn't just show up for us in good times and then go missing but the one who hears our pain and sorrow and accompanies us and speaks to us through it. 
The good shepherd prepares a table before us who nourishes us and feeds us and also feeds those whom we would dare to call enemies. The good shepherd is the one who pursues us with goodness and mercy. The one who follows us our whole life long. My sheep know my voice, Jesus says. I call them by name and they follow me. Friends, the good shepherd is the one who knows our name. The God who has called us and claimed us and loved us our whole lives long. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. Friends, and, and Dave, you're going to notice I took the host control back. I'm trying to get the Facebook thing working, so my apologies. Friends, I invite you to join in our next hymn. If you have the purple hymnal, Glory to God, you'll find it on number 803, or nope, you'll find it 488. I was there to hear your morning cry. If you're joining us and you have the blue hymnal, you can sing along. Uh, through the lyrics that were sent out by email or just Google, I was there to hear your morning cry. The words will pop up soon. So friends, Mark, I'm trying to get your video to show up front and center. Can we hear you, Mark and Dan? Let's try it. We're here. Awesome. All right. Cool. Friends, let us think. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Dan. Friends, you are the children, the sheep of the Good Shepherd, and Christ has shared peace with you. So now let's share peace with one another. I'm going to unmute you all so you can say hi to each other. Peace be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with those of you on Facebook. Y'all are being 
so patient with us this morning. What's happened, if you're wondering why I keep making these weird eyes, is that we're accidentally stuck on gallery view uh, because Dave and I did our host switching. So those on Facebook are seeing a bunch of teeny tiny faces, which is actually maybe perfect and maybe way better uh, on Communion Sunday and as we share Christ that we see one another. Myra says, peace be with you all. Margaret and Robert say, peace be with you. Peace be with you, each and every one of you. I encourage you, especially since we are on gallery view and seeing everyone's faces, Jasmine says, peace be with you all. To look at one of these faces, someone maybe you've been missing, and find someone to to say, to share peace with after the service, whether it's during our fellowship hour here, um, Deidre and Jolie say, peace, I can't get you on Zoom. Um, Missy Jennings says, peace, lots of peace there. Thank you, peace be with all of you. Uh, find one of these faces that you haven't talked to in a while. Um, and sometime later today or this week, pick up your phone and give them a call. So now we'll go to a time of prayer. If you have your, let's see, if, you, if you're on Facebook, I invite you to share your prayer requests now so that we can, in, so we can share those prayers. If you're on Zoom, feel free to share them through the chat function or raise your hand and share them in a minute. Let us pray. God of all love and grace and peace, you who are the good shepherd, you who lead us beside still waters, you who restore our soul. We give you thanks for all that you do. We give you thanks that you are with us, even now, even when we are in the darkest valley. God, we pray for your people today everywhere. We give thanks for those who are born for new birth and for birthdays and remembrance of that time when we, remembrance of the years ago when some of us were born. And we ask for your peace and love and healing in times of sickness and of death. God, we pray especially for our medical workers, for those who are on the front lines and tirelessly working. We pray and ask your peace. We pray for our families, those who are close to us and those far away. We pray for our church family. We pray for our nation and for nations around the world. We pray for people we know and people we don't know. And now, O oh Lord, in the silence and allowed into this virtual holy space, we lift up the prayers on our hearts this morning. Friends, for what? All right, Joan, without a hand, for what do we pray this morning? Um, praying for Marnie as she embarks on a new course of treatment and for other people who are also being treated for cancer. God, in your mercy. Yeah. our prayers for what else do we pray this morning feel free to unmute yourself or raise your hand kirk and mindy well praise that charlie is on the mend uh but prayers for his continued mending he's got a long road ahead of him he's off the ventilator but um it's going to take him several more weeks of intensive rehab to learn how to walk again and to use his hands that are closed and won't open. So uh, continue to pray and lift him up as he has a long road ahead of him for the recovery from COVID-19. Hmm. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'm looking over here on Facebook and I'm seeing them come in. Oh, Myra says prayers for my daughter, Emily, who is turning 18 tomorrow. She's been having a hard, hard time these last couple days. Um, we pray for, yes, for Emily, our own, our dear one. 
who's becoming an adult um, and this hard time for Emily and all seniors who want to be celebrating their graduations right now and should be living those milestones. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. See from Barbara Bergdolt, for those of us who are grandparents, far from our children and grandchildren, hoping that we will stay well so that we will see all of them again before too long. Indeed, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I know I saw a prayer come in. Deidre says, my dad's wife, Annette, and released from her depression. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. A prayer from Missy Jennings, please help all to truly know how to find peace during this time. And amen. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I saw a prayer come in from Nancy and pointed up. Prayers from my beloved friend who is dealing with cancer and not able to be close to her son. Prayers for her and her family. Indeed, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Are there other prayers on our hearts and mind this morning? Feel free to unmute yourselves. And again, with a little delay, but I see them coming in from Facebook. Debbie Spiker says prayers for my daughter, Cassie, who's being induced tomorrow for a safe delivery of baby Alex. Oh, indeed, prayers and looking forward to Thanksgiving. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to ask for prayers for my friend, Danielle, who is estranged from his relatives in what used to be a very close family and he misses them. Hmm. For Danielle, God in your mercy, hear our prayers. prayers. Thank you, Julia. I pray for my brother and his partner who are driving clear across the country uh, starting yesterday to make their way as they move from Philadelphia and to Seattle, uh, where she is going to be a doctor. So an important profession and time in this world. So for Jim and Christina are their names. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Jasmine says prayers for the homeless, the jobless, and for all who live with precarity. God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Barbara Bergdolt says continued prayers for our niece Danielle who is continu continuing her cancer treatment. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray all these things, O oh God, words spoken and unspoken, in your precious and holy name. Amen. Friends, you have given so much to this church, and God has given to us so much more. We come now to our time of offering, and I first, as always, give you thanks. Thank you for the generous financial contributions that you have given to us. Um, it's made us able to keep paying all of our employees, uh, most of whom are at worship right now and can tell you, myself included, thank you so much. It's made us able to continue to give generously and mission. Um, Thank you for all the donations that are coming in for Shared Table, for the way that you are committed to feed the hungry and care for those who are uh, in need during this time. Sherry, I might put you on the spot if you don't mind. Could you give us a 30 second update on, uh, we're both trying to unmute you, I'll let you unmute yourself. Could you give us a 30 second update on just how Shared Table is going? Thanks everyone, this is Sherry from Shared Table with a little background noise that's gonna stop in a moment. Um, many thanks to everybody who has so graciously and generously supported Shared Table. 
Uh, we saw initially a 50% increase in the number of people coming to shared table. That's leveled off to about a 30% increase over our average. Um, we're doing regular emergency food boxes going out weekly, as well as about 40 home deliveries to older and vulnerable adults. We've stepped up our diaper program. So if you know families um, that need home delivery or um, younger families with diaper needs, please get that information to Jenna and she'll email or text me or give you my contact information directly to do that. But we are so appreciative of all the support. Thank you, Sherry. For those who don't know, Sherry is the uh, pastor of El Poblito United Methodist Church, one of my great colleagues, um, and also runs Shared Table. Um, so at the, during this offering time, we ask that you either give online um, to this church or to a charitable organization that is helping those who need help during this time. Or if you don't like online giving, you can always continue to write a check to the church. We'll never complain about that. Um, again, what you are doing is making it possible for us to continue our mission and ministry during this time. Thank you. Now, it's always weird to do this when we haven't had a chance to, uh, haven't had a chance to pass the plates through the pews, but could we sing a doxology, Mark and Dan? Yeah. Let us pray. Loving God, we are grateful each and every day for the gifts that you bestow upon us, even in these trying times. We ask for your mercies for all who are serving you, and we pray that our offerings continue to support the work of your church, and the work of your church amongst its people, and the work of your church into the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And thank you, Dave. And it looks like we have somehow uh, gotten back into speaker view even though we'll be going back to gallery view in a moment for communion, because apparently the Holy Spirit has a sense of humor. Oh, goodness. Friends, it's now as we come to celebrate the Lord's Supper, the sacrament of Holy Communion, I invite you to grab whatever sort of bread or food and juice or beverage you might have with you. Uh, and I'd love you to tell me. So if you're on Facebook, please feel free to write in the comments what, what you're celebrating communion with this morning. Uh, if you're joining on Zoom, feel free to write in the comments or we'll have a chance to hold it up in just a moment. I've got the bread and juice from, and the where, communion wares from the church. Friends, the psalmist sings, the Lord is my shepherd. Nothing shall I want. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Friends, is, this is the good shepherd's table. And at this table, no one is turned away. So let us pray. Gracious God, our mother and our father, our brother, our friend, you walk with us through life and you come to us in Jesus Christ. You come to us in bread and in cup, and you come to us in one another. We give you thanks for the, all these good gifts. God, please send out your Holy Spirit now to the many places where we are gathered. 
where all 50 odd some of us on this call are and send your spirit to turn all this bread and all this cup and coffee and donuts and cookies and water and milk and coffee and I already said coffee and whatever you are, God come to us, fill us and then send us forth to your world. Amen. Friends, dando gracias, o damos gracias, porque en la noche antes de morir, el Señor tomó en sus manos el pan y después de haber dado gracias, lo partió y les dijo, esto es mi cuerpo dado por ustedes. Hagan esto. In memoria de mí. And in the same way, after supper, Christ took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Where every time you drink of this cup and eat of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. In this way, friends, we do proclaim the death and the saving death and resurrection of our Lord until Christ comes again. Friends, behold the body of Christ. Behold, go to gallery view if you're on Zoom and uh, if you're on Facebook, it should go to gallery view, but no promises. Behold the body, oh, there it did. Behold the body of Christ, not just in this bread and this cup and whatever you're using for communion, but in the faces around you, in one another. This is what the body of Christ looks like today. The body of Christ given for you. Now for before we partake, a few of you, I've seen it coming in. Nancy says she's having communion with cornbread and coffee. Uh, Deidre and Jolie say communion today is Danish and holy coffee and water for Jolie. Jolie doesn't need coffee. That's good. Uh, some would argue neither do I. Missy says bread and water. Show us, friends, what, what are you taking communion with this morning? I see bread and, oh, real wine maybe over there. All right. We see coffee. We see water. Oh, Joan says it's grape juice. Well, it could be real wine too. That's, that's fine. Friends, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, and the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Friends, let us pray. God, you took on a body and you came to earth as your son, Jesus Christ. And then you gave up your body and you showed us that you come to us in the gifts of bread and wine. And then you made us your body and you breathed your Holy Spirit into us so that we, the church, will always, always be your hands and your feet in this world. Thank you. Amen. Friends, I invite you to join us in our closing hymn once again. Mark and Dan, what number is it? I lost my paper. 803. 803, my shepherd will supply my need. And in the blue one, what number is it? Uh, 172. 172. 172 in the blue, 803 in the purple. Let us sing God's praises together.
Indeed, friends, at God's table and in God's world, we are no more a savior or a, a stranger or a guest or a savior, but like a child at home. So children of our heavenly God, sheep of the good shepherd, go forth into this world to love and serve the Lord. Go forth to give generously to the mission of this church and the world. Go forth and listen to the voices, not of just anyone who talks, but of the good shepherd who has known you all your life, who was there to hear your morning cry and is there even as we grow old. Friends, go forth to love and serve the Lord or just stick around for a while to join our Zoom uh, fellowship hour. Uh, if you're on Facebook, I'm gonna send you that link in case you want to join us on Zoom. Go forth and as you go, may jo joy and nothing less guide you on the way. May you be blessed and oh, may you be a blessing and may light Love's own crucified risen light guide you and countless others all the way home. Amen. Amen, friends. Go in peace. Oh.